Hey, 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 what's going on, guys and gals? Cats and kittens, you dude and you dudettes, man. Merry Christmas to everybody. I think I'm going to title this video the almost complete version using the iPad with the X32 series mixers, okay? Now, the first thing I want to do is come up here, and the reason I say almost complete is because I know I'm going to leave something out, okay? <laughs> So up here uh, where we touch at the uh, I symbol and the Wi-Fi symbol, as you can see, I'm connected to the console. The first three sets of numbers, guys, are always going to be the same. Okay, nine times out of ten, it's going to be the 192.168.1.1. Okay, and uh, Otto Bear, one of our members up there in the community, was telling me that these numbers, these first two sets of numbers, uh, simply stipulate that this is a private network. Now, as you can see on the last three sets of numbers, the on the X32 console, which is my rack, it's 104. But on the iPad, I have it set to 140. These numbers cannot be the same, okay? In other words, if I set this iPad to the last uh, three over here to 104, it will not connect. They have to be different, okay? Now, the subnet mask, the 255.255.255.0, from what I've read, simply allows these two wireless things to communicate with each other. Okay, that's all that's doing. So, we're going to just simply go ahead and click back up here again. It's going to take us out of there. We're going to come over to Setup on the top right. And here you can see we have our iPad settings. Top bar position, top or bottom. Pull tips, I suggest you leave them on. Uh, the mini meters, that's what you're seeing up here right now uh, on the channels, uh, 1 through 32. If I turn those off, they simply go away, okay? Uh, guys, i got to be honest with you, I don't use the iPad, okay? Uh, I use uh, X32 Edit with my laptop. So if you want these bells and whistles, this is how you're going to get them, okay? The mini faders on and off. As you can see, the black lines come up here now. So that's what they're calling their mini faders. And now they're off. Confirmation pop-ups on. Rotary gestures. I have no idea what that means. Uh, rotary or tooltip rotary position is on the left or the right. Okay. Uh, I'm basically leaving this like it is. On the global. Okay. Your general preferences. Safe main level. If you have this engaged every time you turn off your rack or X32 mixer and turn it back on, even though your main fader may not be at zero, it's going to bring it down to zero. So if you have this on, you have to grab that main fader, okay, bring it down, and then bring it back up to allow audio to come out of your system. This is for locking your stage box. As you can see, it cannot, I'm tapping on it, it will not engage. Hard mutes. Again, big shout out to Auto Bear. Uh, hard mutes is simply this. Let's say that I have channel one assigned to mute group one and mute group three. For whatever reason, I seem necessary to do that. Okay. In order for me to get channel one to come off of mute, I have to unmute both mute groups, both mute group one and mute group three. Okay, uh, we were talking about this the other evening when we had this uh, webinar. Uh, you can go up there and Google it. You know, you see a lot of city council members there. Everybody's going online now. You hear a lot of people, a lot of gentlemen going into the restroom, and you can literally hear their business because nobody turned their mic off. This would be a good reason to use a double mute system. Okay, DCA mutes is just that. If you want to sit there and click that, you can mute your uh, DCAs, and it does not come through. Uh, invert the mutes. I don't really deal with that. Got no idea what it means. Okay, the link preferences. You have the delay and uh, HA link. These are going to be in your, uh, when we get up here to the channels, you'll see this, uh, all this stuff here come up in the channel strip. Okay, your dynamics link, your mute fader link, and the MC depends on main left and right. 
Now, what this is, this is your middle channel or your mono channel. Once you set what you want to go to that mono channel, if you have this set to this, if you have it engaged, I'm going to disengage it right now. Right now, the main left and right fader is independent of the mono channel fader. If you link it, when you raise the master fader, then that will also bring the middle channel up with it. Okay? I like to run mine separate. Panning mode, left, right, mono, left, center, right. Okay? So, however you want to set up your panning, this is where you'll do it. And then you have your RTA preferences. Okay? This is for your spectrogram. That's for the bar. Uh, your gain for your RTA if you're going to ring out your room. This is what it is. The auto gain is your on and off. Okay. Uh, normally, if you're going to do this, guys, learn how to do it. Okay. Go up there and, and Google. Uh, look at some videos on YouTube. It's real simple to do. You know, get your mic, set it up, and that way you can set your own inputs. Okay. Now, the config. This is where you're going to set, you know, how many of your buses do you want to be uh, post fade or pre fade or post eq pre eq uh when you come up here to edit as you can see now everything kind of highlights you can sit there and turn it on and off and then we're just going to hit cancel okay remote i don't deal with anything with midi okay i'm sure there's many many members in our community i know that deals with midi i don't deal with it i'm running sound i'm recording okay that's what i do Preamps, I don't really mess with these preamp blocks because I can do all of this. I do this individually on the channels. The card, it's showing me here on the console what the firmware version is, the sample rate that I've got it set to. It's telling me that my AES 50A port is a good sync, which is going to my S16. The clock source is local, which means my rack is controlling all of this. The console sync is good. The card sync is good. So everything's working in my rig. Okay. Now my SD recording, I've got 32 channels. Right now I've got channel or the SD card number one selected. I can format it here if I want to. I do not want to. And then my channel routing is automatic, whether it's recording or playback. I just put it on automatic and it seems to work just fine. My USB interface is 32 in, 32 out. As you can see right up here, I've got uh, I've actually got 41 channels running from Reaper uh, into my rack, and that's a different video. Okay, assignables. Again, I have no idea what this does. This console does not have any assignable controls. Okay, so that's pretty well from the setup and being connected. Okay, now, sends on fader. When you click this, you'll see that you have 16 options. These options are your mix buses. Okay, as you can see, when I press number nine there, over here on the left, it says Dana's P2. That is my in-ear monitor. If I go back to number one, it just says mix bus one because I have not labeled any of these other than Mixbus 9, which is coming out of the first XLR output on my S16. This way I can sit there and take your scene and listen to it like it was coming through a monitor to see, because a, a lot of the questions, I'm not getting any signals into my monitor. Okay? And this is how I troubleshoot them, guys. All right? Now, once I click off of this, it immediately goes back to these channels. Again, sends on fader. Number nine, what do I want to do? I want to send a little kick to it. I want to kick, send a little more of the outside kick. That's what that OS is for. I definitely want some bass in there. Guys, you have to use this and mix your own in-ear monitor mix just like you were going to mix it from a board. Okay? Just like you were going to play it to the front of the house. Some people want more of one thing. They want less of others. And while you're on sends on faders here, you simply come up here, and if that's all I wanted on the first eight sets of, of inputs, then I'm going to sit over here and click on channel 9 through 16 now up on the top. And here, I can add whatever I want to in there. 
And I would do this all the way across. Okay, at this point, I'm going to come over. As you can see, I got some lead vocals in there. I want some of the piano in there. And I want the background vocals in there. Once I'm finished, I just simply click on Sends on Fader again. And then come back on top left channel 1 through 8. And I'm right back to where I was. Okay. Now, Sends on Fader. When you come up to details, you'll see that Sends on Fader disappears. The only place you'll find that Sends on Fader is by clicking this home button, top left. Again, Detail, Effects, Scenes, it will not be there. Okay? So we'll go back to Home. There's our Sends on Fader. It brings up our 16 mix buses, which is going to be your in-ear monitors. Okay? If, if that's what you're going to use your buses for. So now the detail. If you look here, this is your panning control. And I'm going to sit here, I'm going to use these arrows and just go back to channel number one. You'll see the one right here. This is your pan. This is how you pan it right here. Okay. Now it's very hard to see where that's getting back to zero. Right there, I'm somewhere close. I don't know exactly where it's at. That's one thing I don't like about this app. Uh, X32 Edit, I can sit there, and let's just go ahead and bring up X32 Edit real fast. And here we are at the base. As you can see right here, here's my panning control. Here's my kick control. Uh, I'm at a negative 4 on X32 Edit. I cannot see that distinction uh, anywhere on the uh, X32 mix for the iPad. So I'm going to bring this back over, and now I'm back to zero. Okay. Here we are. This is this is your channel strip. Okay. Here's my source. I'm coming in on card one. Okay. And I'm doing this because I'm bringing everything in through uh, Reaper. So that's all there is about that. Uh, here is your pre and your post. Or your insert okay we're not inserting anything into this uh, we're just going to make it post if I wanted to link channel one and two together I would click this okay I'm gonna say no you cannot link an even channel to an odd channel you must start with the odd channel in other words I can link one and two but I cannot link two and three okay you must start with the odd now, the gate, I've got it active here, the dynamics, the compressor, I've got it active, the EQ, it's active with the low cut, that's what this is right here, okay, the sends, I'm sending this to my, right there it is, number nine, okay, that's my in-ear monitor, and also I'm sending it to FX1, uh, which is bus number 13. So, and we're going to look at all of this again. I'm just showing you what this one particular uh, layout is on the screen. Naming, this is how you name it. When you click up in this spot, it's going to bring up uh, your keypad. When you want to lower down here, bottom right, you just lower it. Okay, same thing. You can change the color on it. You can change uh, what the symbol is going to be. And then you just simply come over and you're done with that. Now, the presets. Here is your recall scope on the left. The head amp. I don't want to change that. The configuration, maybe. The gate compressor, e equalizers, and the sends. I don't want to change the sends. Okay? So I can come over here and I can literally grab. This is, this is what's inside of the rack now. Okay? Since this is a kick drum, you would simply come down and try and find something just like right here, there's the BBM kick. Okay, over here on the right, you can load that. And that's what it's asking me. Do you want to load that? And I'm going to say yes. So I just loaded all of that. Okay. So here we are, guys, with the gate. Okay, it's coming down to negative 18. It's not letting anything through there past that. So we need to back off of that a little bit. We don't want that gate to stay on all the time. As you can see, now it's coming on and then going off. Our range is how many dBs do we want to reduce it by? 
Uh, the attack is going to be instantly. The hold, we don't want to hold it that long. The release, same way. I want it to release instantly. Okay, and as the type, as you can see, is the gate. And we can uh, choose from uh, three expanders and one duck capability. We turn it on and off simply by doing this. Okay. EQ. Uh, the EQ is on and off. The low cut on and off. Uh, here is the mode for one. As you can see how it changes the high shelf, the high cut, low cut, low shelf. Okay, and we're just going to leave it on the low shelf. That's for the one. There is no low two. The low mid, the low uh, or the high mid, and then the highs. Okay, your sends again. Where are you going to send it to? The naming, you name it the same way. The presets, this is what we just went through. Okay, now you can do this on every single channel by coming home and then selecting the next channel, or you can use these down here at the bottom. Okay, and this is just going to take you through all of your channels. Sometimes it's faster just to start up here at the 9 through 16. Right there is your channel source, 16. Uh, right underneath your panning controls. Again, your source is right there. Uh, your phase is uh, depending on how your microphones are set. Okay, here you can assign it to a DCA group or you can assign it to your mute group. So I can sit there and go 16. 15, all I'm doing is assigning the mute group and then moving the uh, arrow back to the left to go down. Okay, and then now we can come back up here and go home. So now uh, I forgot what channels I was on. I think I was on this set of channels. If I hit mute group number one, as you can see over here on the right, they now all mute. Okay, and now they're unmuted. Now, Let's go back to channels one through eight. I'm going to take the kick. Here is where you can assign your DCA groups as well as your mute groups. Okay, your auto mix group. I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and click that on X. As you can see right up here now, the X has come up. The weighting. Okay, how much weight do you want to give this one microphone? And this is truly if you're going to be doing like conference calls or a conference table, or a convention center, just anything that you're going to have a set of mics to where when one speaker is speaking, every, every other mic in this group is going to lower. So you don't get all that background noise. You don't get all of that uh, people tap on the desk type of thing. Uh, I'm, I can't honestly tell you whether it does this through ducking or whether it does this through gating, but the weight is simply this. If I take microphone one and I give it all the weight, that means that it's going to pick up the most sound. So if somebody is spaced over three foot away from the first mic and their weight is... uh zero my microphone is always going to come on and stay on while they're speaking as well so it's kind of like having uh if you were at a town hall meeting a council meeting and you you have the the town mayor and you know he's going to be doing the most speaking okay so you would give him the most weight so when everybody else would stop talking or he comes in and and uh, whatever he wants to say, okay, then his microphone is going to basically stay on uh, most of the time, okay? And that's what the auto group is. So if we come back up here and go home, as you can see right here, kick number one, it is on the X group, okay? You can see the gate coming in here as it's dimming out. You'll see the little triangle symbol here. Let's go back to the kick. And let's give it all the weight. And then you'll see this change. As you can see now, the arrow is up high. We've got the, if, if we turn this off, 
Okay, you'll see that it stopped doing this. We have both, we have channel one and channel seven on this. If I kick this, I can just say this is off. I can come back to channel one. And I can turn it off as well. So now nothing is on the XY, okay, on the auto mix. Okay, details. I think we've already went over the effects. These are your FX racks, okay? And over here on the right-hand side, as you see effects, it's going to bring up everything that you can assign to this FX. You see all the little dots up here in the center of it, okay? The graphics on these are absolutely gorgeous, okay? So these are all the effects that you can set there and apply to bus 13. And then there it is. Okay, so here's a, the, the MS Fair compressor. As you can see, the compression that's given right there. Uh, this is the input gain, the threshold, the time, the output gain. You're going to have to go through and look at these to see what you want to use. Over here on the bottom right, you'll see a 1 and a 2. When you see those numbers, that means it has two layers. Okay, so the size is on. And then there's the middle, okay? Uh, FX2, all of these guys work the same way. FX1 through FX4, you can either use sends and returns, or you can use them as inserts. Anything on FX5 through FX8 are strictly inserts, okay? You cannot use these on sends and returns, as you can see right there, insert, it's off, okay? We're going to click it. Now we can insert it to any of the channels, any of the 16 buses, any of the matrix mixes, or the main left and right, or the main center. These are inserts. That's it. That's, a, that's all there is about this. As you can see, these are the scenes that I have loaded on the rack, okay? Uh, these are all Drew Brashler scenes, okay? When I first started this many years ago, I bought his scenes, and I reversed engineered them, and that's how I'm kind of figuring out what was going on with this, because I just wasn't getting a lot of help off of YouTube, okay? So I do know that you can edit this, you can copy and paste them, you can save them. Uh, I'm going to click off of that, parameter safes. If you have these checked, and you save this scene, it's going to save everything except what you've got highlighted. Okay? So if you want to save everything, then that's what you do. Channel safes are the same way. Okay? If you want to save everything in this scene, but let's say that you don't ever want channel 17 and 18 to change, then you're going to highlight those two. Okay? So when you save this new scene, it is not going to affect channel 17 and channel 18 because you have the chain safe or the channel safe on. Okay? Meters. These are all the channel input meters as you see coming through here. Okay? It's kind of hard to see the... Uh, little decibels here coming in what they're coming in at the input the gain reduction is for your gate these are all the channels that i have gated and then the gain reduction through your dynamics which is your compressor okay same thing channel one through channel 32. the mix buses mix bus nine remember that's the one that we set up for my personal in-ear monitor bus 13 is because of the effects I have going from bus 13 into the lead vocals. There is no gain reduction on the buses. And there is no gain reduction on the matrix, okay, or the compressors. Not coming into this, into the mix buses. So, in other words, I don't have any compressors on my buses. Okay, that's basically what that's telling you. Now, the aux FX. The auxiliary sends, okay, 
This is what you send out. This is your auxiliary out. Your auxiliary returns is what you're running into your aux ends. Okay? Your FX returns, as you can see, number one. This is standing or representing FX 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay? So the in and out, this is pretty well giving you an overview. As you can see, it's coming out of uh, the, the inputs are up on top. The auxiliary sends is I'm feeding the uh, alias, the analog mixer I have, with auxiliary sends 1 and 2. Those are auxiliary outs 1 and 2. Okay? The AES EBU I have turned off in routing. My monitor tab, uh, you can see I'm getting good signal coming in there. The outputs, bus 9, 13, and then 15 and 16 is my mains. And then the PC alternate outputs all the way across. Okay, so that's it for the meters. Now I'm going to go ahead and start my tape deck, which is going into auxiliary 1 and 2, and watch those meters come up here on the auxiliary returns and there we go okay so at this point I'm going to uh, come into the aux 1 and 2 as you can see there's my CD player coming in and then if we look over here on the uh, top right we can see in our little meters here recorder the recorder tab here is our source the main left the main right I've got it uh, this is how you select them Okay, you can record anything that's listed here. Okay, anything. And we're just going to do main left and main right. As you can see, the meter's coming up there. I've got it post EQ. I can set this to pre fader. Set this to pre fader. Now, it doesn't matter. Regardless of how I move my master fader, okay, it doesn't matter. If I come back up here to our meters, or I'm sorry, recorder, as you can see, I'm getting that same amount of signal coming in, okay? And what it does, this will keep you from clipping, okay? You're at the concert, you're at the service, you're, you're trying to record this into your USB stick, you start raising up your master fader because your pastor or the crowd, they want it louder. And all of a sudden, before you know it, you can make it louder. It sounds good. You don't realize that you're clipping. And you go to pull your stick out and go back and review your left and right channel. And it sounds like garbage. Okay? So this is why I recommend you put that on pre-fader. And you can adjust this on your input down here to the left. Okay? There's your trim. As you can see, I can run that right channel or that left channel up now. Okay, that's a solid clip right there. As you can see, that blue that's just staying on and why it's not showing red, I don't know. I didn't design the program. Okay, so I'm going to bring this back down to zero. And guys, this is also helpful too if you're doing a lot of panning. Okay, you can actually take uh, your, your right or left channel, whatever makeup game you need to do, and you can raise this or lower it, as you can see, okay, to where you can actually even out your channels. Okay, it just makes for a nicer stereo mix. Now, the routing, here we go. Here's the home, okay. This is my inputs. It clearly shows inputs. Everything that you see under these inputs can be used as an input for the X32 mixer. I'm using all the cards as the inputs so I can get audio coming in here. Okay, so my card is, it's card 1 through 8, 9 through 16, 17 through 24, 25 through 32. If I was going to be recording local, if I was going to be doing this, okay, uh, ba, 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 um, 1 through 8, 9 through 16. As you can see now, the only thing coming in is my aux channel. There is no other signal up here on these meters. Okay? My aux return, 15 and 16. That's what it would come through and play through, aux 1 through 8. 
Okay. If I raise it up, there we go. And then you'll see this better on the meters here. And there we go with that. Okay. So let's go back to routing. I'm going to change this back to my card input 1 through 8, 9 through 16. This is going to bring it in from Reaper. And now I've got all my signals coming back out. Okay. Analog out. These are your mix buses. Okay. If we come down here and click on number nine, you can clearly see where it says Dana's P2. I've got it coming out of the mix bus. It's going to be mix bus nine and it's on pre fader plus the mute. Okay. I don't need to put any delay to it. So these are your XLR outputs, even though it says virtual. Don't worry about that. Okay. These are your. As you can see, the virtual out 15 is going to the main left and main right, and it is post fader. You want that fader to be able to control that on your analog out. Your auxiliary out, as you can see, auxiliary out is my main left. It's an insert, main left, and it's post fader. Auxiliary two is my main right coming out, okay? And that's what's feeding my Alias board so you can hear this. Uh, the AES EBU I've got turned off because we don't have that output. P16s, okay. Normally this is going to be, uh, let's see, kick drum, output one, P16 three, the bass. As you can see, it's bringing. Up what these are it's direct out and direct out channel so if I come back out to p1 kick direct out direct out channel 1 and that's why when we come up here and look at the meters that's why you see everything lit up down here uh, on the bottom right the p16 alternate outputs okay so that's a real simple thing you've got 16 of them now it doesn't only it, that does not mean that you can only use 16 of those outputs okay I could sit here and take this and run this let's say that I ran all uh, 10 channels of my drums under mix bus 1 okay as you can see mix bus 1 now how it's changed over to mix bus 1 so all 10 channels if I send those if I come up here and go back to home home here and I go to my mix buses, mix bus one, come over here to name it and just say drums. And let me delete that first. Okay. Then I don't need this anymore. I can give it a color, whatever I want to color it. It's on drums. It's mix bus number one. And we say, okay, that's what we want. All right. So we come back to home. Come into the channels. Sends on fader. Mix bus number one. As you can see there on the left hand side, right there, it says drums. So I can just start blending all of these drums into. That mix bus. And I'm done. Okay? Now when we go over and look at our meters, let's look at our meters again. Easiest way to do this, guys, is to look at your meters. Mix bus. Mix bus 1. That's all the signal now we just put into mix bus 1. We come back to routing. We come over to the P1. Mix bus 1. Mix bus 1. Let's go ahead and make it post fader. Or I'm sorry, let's go ahead and make it pre fader on this. So now everything going into channel one, that's what that means, P16 out one, is going to be coming from those 10 inputs for the drums. Okay? You, you, it, the easiest way to do this is to sit down with a pencil and paper and just start writing down where you want all of this to go, okay?
Now, the card out. With me, I always mirror the card out to what I've got as my inputs. Okay, card 1, 9, 17, and 32. Card out. It's going to look the same. AES 50, out 1 through 8, 9 through 16. 1 through 8, 9 through 16. I've only got the 1P16, so I really don't have to worry about this. Uh, 9 through 16, uh, 1 through 8, and then you've got the AESA. This is all the AESA ports. Okay, then you've got the B ports, which is right over next to it, and then you've got the presets. Okay, the presets on this. I've got the local in and out, the AES 50A inputs, the B puts, and the card playback. Okay, that's what I have. So, monitor. As you can see, the monitor, talkback A, talkback B, and the oscillator. Okay, this is how you mute the monitor if you're going to use the iPad and you're listening to it. Okay. As you can see, I've got it uh, setting pretty high, but I like it like that. Uh, the left, right, after final listen, that means that when I solo something, I'm going to hear the effect with it. The source trim, I leave it at the minus six. If I want to dim it, if I'm sitting there, when you go to solo a channel out, it's going to get much louder. Okay? I promise you, it's going to get much louder. So you're going to want to dim that channel. Okay? So I, I set mine to the negative 20. So what I would do is simply come up here if I wanted to solo this, okay? Uh, monitor, I would have this on dim, and that way when I listen to that, as you can look at my meter right here now, it's coming up to around a negative 30. If, watch what happens when I clear the solo. And take the dim off of it. Okay, see how much higher it is? But if I just go over and solo channel 8, if I just solo that kick drum, it is not going to drop in my monitor level, as you can see. Okay, I have to sit there and, and use the dim on it. And then when you clear it and take the dim off of it, like I said, it goes back up. Uh, I don't have any talkbacks right now uh, going into it. Uh, if you're going to use an external mic, this is, this is what you would do. External mic in, uh, auto dim A when you're talk level to where you can dim whatever you're listening to. Okay, here's your talk destination. Do you want to send it to somebody's in-ear monitor? Uh, here it doesn't label it like I think it should. Uh, this is my mix bus. If they wanted to send it to me, they would click it and it would just come to me. Okay? You can send it over the entire PA system right here. You know, you're talking through the uh, left and right. Okay? Now, another thing I don't like about this is it doesn't have a latch. Okay? Now, over here on the X32 edit, if you look right over here, okay, I can sit here and I can latch this. So if I go back here and I say uh, enable this, and then I want to use the talkback A over here on the right, you'll see it's latched. So now if I want to come up here, Okay, I've got that finished now on the X30. Now when I want to talk to somebody, when I click that, it stays clicked. And it'll stay clicked, as you can see right there uh, on the iPad. Okay, now when I unclick it, it goes off. Okay, so I don't really care that much about the iPad not having that feature, but you know it is what it is. Then you've got your talk back B. Okay, if you want to use two inputs, uh, it's up to you. Uh, it all depends on how big your gig is, man. You might not even use them at all, okay? 
And then here you've got your oscillator. This is where you're going to ring out your stuff. This is where you're going to ring out your rooms. You're going to do whatever you want to ring out. You can choose from the sine wave, the pink noise, and the white noise. Okay, there's a bunch of videos up there on how to do it. Okay, here's your frequency one, frequency two settings uh, on and off. Uh, this is the level as far as the gain adjustments, as you can see. And then if we wanted to send this uh, main left and right, there it is on the main left and right. Okay. But we don't want to do that, so we're going to turn that off. And go back to home to the channels. Guys, I know it's a lot of information. It's almost been an hour now. And uh, there's, there's a whole lot of stuff I probably did leave out. But if you're brand new to this, okay, uh, over here, so, uh, show solos. Over here, the, the, the mute, the solo button. If you turn this off, then all you have is the mute button, as you can see down here at the bottom. Okay, you turn it back on, and now you have the mute and solo. Edit it. The mute groups. When you edit it, you can say here and assign whatever you want to assign to it. Okay, then you close it. Come back. Uh, unedit it. And then as you can see, when you touch mute group one, all of these channels just mute it. Okay, if you want to take those off, you click it again. You simply come up and tap them again. Close and then edit. Mute group one, nothing comes on. All right. If you want to learn more about this, come on up and see me, uh, DanaTucker.com. Uh, we do this one-on-one -on -one via Zoom. You got questions, I'll try and give you answers. They'll be legitimate answers. Try and save you some time from searching all over YouTube. All right? Take care. God bless. And we are out of here.